Welcome to Strategy Battle Gamers to another GBHL YouTube channel video. You're here with your channel host, GBHL James, and today we have a guest host for what is this week's edition of Speak Friend and Question. I'd like to introduce you all to Mr. David Alexander. Woo! <laughs> Thanks very much, George. We've got George behind the camera as well. And that's because it's the end of the Great British Hobbit League 2014. Yes. Mm -hmm. and, the, uh, and the end of, hopefully, uh, an amazing event, which was Stockport the League Final. What do you reckon, guys? Yeah, good one. Yeah. Good one. Yeah. They're under no pressure no whatsoever pressure. <laughs> to say that in my presence. Uh, now, a speak friend question, which will be coming late because of the event, and of course, Jamie can't pick up the pieces at the moment because he hasn't got the internet in his new place. Um, so I do apologise for this coming late, uh, but hopefully, hopefully, we'll be able to get our act together soon, and get some uh, really good content. Okay. So, this is how it works. We're doing it off the phone, and when it's on the phone, any particularly long questions might be cut off part way through, and some of them will be missing. So what I'll do, nice and loud. Yeah. You can christen your first speak friend and question experience and you can read that for me. I can read okay, right. Read nice see. and loud. The longest paragraph you did. Yep. Right. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I normally do to Jamie. Yes, this is uh, Dom Hill and he asks, Hey guys, uh, congrats on over a year of speak friend and question. Uh, you've only made fifty one videos by the time you're reading this, but I still oh checked and uh, the speak friend and question was posted on the twenty fifth of November, so yeah. Uh, when I'm painting my elves and in batches, and I use uh, and I and I use a wash on the cloaks, I find that the time I've finished washing, uh, by the time I finished washing the last one, the the wash from the others has f uh, flowed down into the pools at the bottom of uh, my cloak. The question is, how do you combat this when you paint? I've tried lying models down, but uh, then the wash is on the on the other side comes in out of the recesses. Secondly. Do you reckon, excluding monsters, would a Middle Earth power lifting <laughs> would a, who would win a Middle Earth power lifting competition? I think Dwalin. <laughs> I, th I think I think Dwalin have a killer bench, inch uh, from wielding axes and smithing hammers. But Boromir may take it in the squat and deadlift, thanks to spending most of his his life in heavy armor. Azag obviously lifts, but he is too tall to squat heavy. Uh, there are no weight categories, With and it's, yeah, it's, it's about I'll total weight, that. not a percentage of body weight. Uh, these, and then it cuts off. These, and then it cuts these. off. Thank you very much. <laughs> I thought he did quite well, though. What do you reckon? Yeah. I think I think he did quite well. Uh, it's good that we've got George here, because George actually does quite a lot of powerlifting. <laughs> so, um, so what do you reckon, George? Are trolls allowed? Mm -hmm. I was say, I think <laughs> trolls, yeah. Smaug. Smaug. <laughs> I think even the Smaug model that is, uh, that's recently uh, going to be released mm -hmm. could probably squat more than we can. <laughs> just the model itself. Yeah. Well, he's going he's, he's to squat all the time, being you know kind of a dragon. So it's just he exists in a squat position. Yeah. Uh, I, th I think trolls. I think trolls are probably going to be the, mm -hmm. the best call. Goblin king. Short Goblin arms. King. Yeah. Just he does short arms, he's probably got a good bench press. He does a lot short of, legs. He does a lot of throwing other goblins, so I think <laughs> probably good at uh, <laughs> a nice uh, clean and press. <laughs> um, as for the painting, uh, yeah, I've noticed that before, you know, if you put on too much wash at once, you know, you move along and it does tend to pull. Uh, I'm actually quite, like, I used to be really, really generous with my washes. If I'm painting something that I want to look really good now, I'm very careful about the direction at which I'm pulling the washes. Mm. So I'm pulling it towards the recess, but I don't put a lot on. Um, so I just sort of pull it in and I keep on pulling it and take some off the brush and keep pulling it so that you don't end up with too much on there. That's what I tend to do. How about yourself? Yeah, uh, uh, I, again, I tend to be quite overly heavy and I think I tend to find that often if you kind of either water down a wash, put a bit like a, a couple more coats of a very, of yep. not a lot of wash rather than. It gets, gets you to you can you can aim it a bit more in terms of where you yeah. actually want it to go rather than yeah I used to be so completely because the wash is magic over. isn't it mm -hmm. you know it, yeah, can, yeah. it makes a miniature go from looking not great to actually looking really good and you can make a miniature look really good by pouring loads loads of wash over it and then you can get away with the pools in the recesses etc by making sure that your next coat which of course is your base colours again that you just go over those areas where you pulled so you've just got the shadow where you want it to be so you can get through it like that. So thank you very much Dom, sorry that the uh, the next the next part of your question was cut off. Next up we've got the Wargamer TV. He's put congrats on 50 speak friend and question wall. Thank you very much buddy. He's put I'm currently working on some hunter orcs and I've just read the FAQ that they can have half a bow limit instead of the normal one third. Is it worth maxing out the bows on them? He's then put also is there any other license you would like to see GW or perhaps another miniature company take on or make a miniature game of? So let's start off with the first bit. Hunter orcs. With, with bows or with without? Do they hit on fives? Is it or is he? 
They hit on fives and they hit on sixes if they move. Yeah, and sixes move. So I mean, they're they're really kind of a combat army. That's the thing because they're it, and they they don't have the defense to be able to really stand back and shoot at you because they're only defense five, which means any you come across any elf elven bows or any strength three bows, mm -hmm. you you slow down and try and shoot at them. Uh, they're just gonna just blow you away with it. Sort of yeah, I would I would agree with you. I think evil armies are, apart from Isengard, are going to be struggling with um, struggling with any kind of shooting contest, uh, and their strengths are sort of having those two attacks and getting up in people's faces. I would say, it's but like, but if you've got the spare points, mm -hmm. it's not a bad idea to have some because then it prevents you in those situations yeah. where you know you might get some scummy Rohan player who you know just runs around you for a few turns and picks you off if you're not doing anything about it it's, it's probably not worth having the 50% of them because that's you know say you've got like 20 odd models that would be another 20 odd points you can spend on yeah. sev several more hunter orcs and might even be a better idea to counter those kind of threats is to mount a couple mm, yeah yeah to um, counter those threats uh, and in terms of other licenses uh, well, a lot of people sort of say things like, "Oh, I'd love to see Game of Thrones and stuff," don't they? Yeah, you know, that'd be that'd be similar. It's that's that's it's tricky because um, Game of Thrones, you think of it being all kind of similar setting and all these kind of big battles, but a lot of the things that make that setting interesting is not so much the big battles, is as much as like all the intrigue, intrigue and, yeah, I would not, agree. and all the horrific heartbreak about all your favorite characters. And, <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, I, I read them all years ago, and it's one of, it's one of the few series of books that. Um, that I've been there waiting for the next book to come out yeah. for years, um, so it's it, it's good to see it explode onto. It, it's it's different. I but it, started doing the, the sort of um, the same thing that I did with Lord of the Rings. Is after I started seeing the films, I deliberately s didn't read any of the books until I finished seeing the sort of films adaptation yeah, yeah, because yeah. you didn't. And it's the same with uh, I've been kind of reading the books, but only the books that go up to the points of the CV series I've seen. <laughs> I'm in a dangerous position because I'm in a book now where it kind of overlaps in various different it ways. So it, you, it does overlap. You, and you don't know if you turn a page and you're going to say, this is new. Well, this next se this, is the, this is the thing. If the next series of Game of Thrones comes out before the next book, you are mm -hmm. going to be getting a lot of the stuff that you don't really... Yeah, I mean, stuff in, you mean the stuff in the in the series will now be further ahead than the book will be. There will be some stuff like that just because of how they filmed it. But also, what you're going to get is you're going to get some complete because that's the thing with like Dance of Dragons, is you're going to get completely new storyline, completely new characters in an alien place where you don't know anybody. Mm. So that could be quite interesting. Yeah. So next up, we've got Alex Wright, and he's put, "Hi guys, I'm going to build two bag end Hobbit homes and send them your way." Oh, thank you very much. We had a Shire board, didn't we? Did you get yes, to play on the Shire did. board? Um, yes, I did actually. I think one of the last couple of games I got. Did you play on it? Yeah. Are you oh, getting off? I'm getting off. He's leaving. You don't even get to see him. It's gorgeous, yeah. George. Come on, let's bring him into the shop for a hug. Come on. Thanks very much for coming, buddy. Let's get him. It's George! Do you know that this guy can. can. squat a bus? <laughs> and a I David, did last night. And a David Reed. <laughs> 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 oh, if David Reed is watching this. Yeah. <laughs> I'll just, see you later, George. Love you. Uh, Sorry about that, David. <laughs> um, so where were we up to? Oh, right, yeah. Hobbit holes. Um, he's put, uh, what address can I send these to? Well, if you send me an email to ilovewargaming at gmail.com, I'll give you an address to send them to rather than, uh, you know, it might be a bunch of weirdos watching mm -hmm. this channel. <laughs> Let's come and find out where I live. Yeah. Um, he's put, also, uh, you suggested the Lake Town terrain for... An epic layout. I agree. That would be great. Yeah, that'd be cool. Wouldn't yeah, it? Right room. It has to be like an entire board that's made of it. It's just you know. It'd be br Well, it'd be a nightmare for cavalry players. Same with the Goblin Town boards that you've seen. A lot of leaping over things and falling into deep water. <laughs> yes, I would not like that. Um, he's put this late town would be half burned after a devastating smog attack. What a neat idea! And one other question: What do you recommend for transporting your miniatures when travelling so that they are protected? I use a Games Workshop case, so it's not ideal. I, I've used the same half-broken Games Workshop case that I've used for you know, a dozen years for for most of my models, and then I'm 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 kind of the worst person to ask for this because I'm quite known for for using all sorts of weird boxes just to transfer things. Like <laughs> mo most of my army comes in uh, like the old you kind know, of uh, butter and you kind know, of. Oh yeah, yeah, I've seen your, your Tupperwares. Tupperwares yeah, and, so, to be tough, tough not a bad idea. Tupperwares and, and layers of kitchen roll. <laughs> <laughs> between but things. I've seen that quite yeah. a lot, and I've used that before. Where you've got Tupperware, um, 
bubble wrap, and then you've got like loads of cotton wool mm -hmm. and stuff. That that can work. But then if but it's, cotton wool ends up getting into your minis. You have the really tricky things like like fell beasts and stuff, and there's 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 either no good way of doing that, or I think you do what. Did, did 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 Jamie magnetize them, or did you just have them that they could just pull apart? Or who was that on the horses? Uh, on the on the fell beasts. Uh, oh, at, at Sterling. Um, was it was it Jamie? Who had them? I don't it know. might have been. Somebody, somebody, somebody I did. noticed his were disassembled at one point, which might have been. Some people get the custom right? boxes, don't they? There's there's a lot yeah. of new custom boxes where you've got like um, the inserts can be for things that are monster size, things that are cavalry size, etc. It's just like a big thick thing of. Uh, yeah. Of cute columns that you can take out whichever ones you want for the size, yep. uh, and they tend to just be like a, a, a cardboard box, effectively that's got a handle, and obviously opens up like a lid. But then you've got some really kind of de they're deeper than the Games Workshop tray, so I think they're better. I think it's mm. probably the way I'll go. Now, interestingly, our next question is from Mr. George Perkins, <laughs> who could have who could have asked this himself here yeah. and now. Uh, I'll let you read this one out. All right, thanks. Uh, there it is. A uh, big thanks to the GBHL team for the work and effort they put into this channel. My question, uh, do you think the current batch of leaked spoiler pictures of the shiny new toys for Battle of Five Armies don't show off how great these models really are? For example, Toriel, Mirkwood Exile, wasn't inspiring in the leaked pictures, but once I saw it in the flesh, it was great. Uh, I yeah. would completely agree. Now, some of the prizes, mm -hmm. the raffle prize. Did you won a raffle prize, didn't you? Yes, I did. Uh, to the to the to heartbreak and disappointment of all. I mean, I took, <laughs> took the took the, took the um, thranduil and the foot and mountain. The raffle was quite popular. We we had five good mm -hmm. prizes. They were different to what was in the rules pack. I mm -hmm. did put I did put in the rules pack new releases pending because I knew there would be some new stuff. Um, and there was like a Legolas, the new Legolas foot mounted. There was thranduil foot mounted. There was the Mirkwood armored captain. There was Tariel, mm -hmm. uh, and there was also the armored bowman. Oh, I would completely agree with that. Mm -hmm. Because it's it happens for a lot of the models, yeah. Is it, um, the new pa the paint jobs that they're putting up are not, they're just not, they're not great. They they see that Damien notices this. They seem to do something as well where they where they're painting like a bottom eyelid. Yeah, I saw him posting about that. Yeah, it's, it's, they, they often find that especially a lot of the elves um, that they always look like really sort of kind of squinty eyed or puffy eyed yeah. and. In a, in a strange sort of way, and not. In it's a like their way. Alfred, the the Alfred um, that they did. He, the, you know, because he's got, you know, quite a big eye shape in the thing. He, if mm -hmm. you paint that bottom eyelid, he just looks. He looks. He looks not like Alfred. Yeah, which is which is weird in a way because that's that is actually part of the model. The mo that is the model mm -hmm. that is bottom eyelid. But if you almost kind of ignore that and paint it as part of the eye, yeah, it actually looks more natural. Of course, you have got to be careful because you end up with like really bug eyed and if people, if you can, you do a bit mad with it. Uh. But Toriel is a good example because I hadn't seen well, I hadn't seen any of the new miniatures until these arrived for the raffle, which was very popular. And Toriel in particular, the 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 fine cast Toriel actually really looks like. Um, Lily. That's the second name. Mm -hmm. oh, um, <clears throat> it actually looks like her, mm. and I think a good paint job. I'm looking forward to the first person who puts. Um, uh, somebody might have done, but puts up a really, really good paint job of Tariel up because she's good, and the Mirkwood armored captain's good. Yes, yes. Right. I, I mean, some some people complain that they thought he'd be in a more of a fighty pose, but I think. I I th I think he looks more of a kind of a it's a good kind of leader pose. It's a good sort of uh, yeah. Sort of, you know, sometimes you have if you have everybody in a kind of a combat mm. pose, it doesn't really distinguish one as being a leader or. Um, no, I, I would I would mm -hmm. completely agree with that. He's a lovely model, um, and having seen some of the new the new dwarves, the new armored dwarves as well, mm. you know, uh, they look great as well. Yeah, like the, the the Bilbo and Thorin looked really good. The Barlin in particular from the Dwalin Barlin and Oin looked really good. So I think that don't judge the models until you until get a chance it. to see them yourself. It happens a lot. There's, I, mean, I, I, I can't remember exactly an example, but there was, there's been a lot of miniatures, and not just in the Lord of the Rings range, and some of the other things where you've seen the pictures of them uh, on their website, and it just doesn't look very impressive at all. No. Just from their, even sometimes weirdly from their their 360 things. Sometimes mm. some of the models have not. Or they've chosen the wrong sort of angle or the wrong yeah. setting, and for some reason, and when you actually look at it in person, it looks there's a lot more detail. It seems. Uh, yeah. Uh, I think you get. I don't know. I don't know how it is. You see the scale of it, or. I, I, I'm very yeah. surprised that the that the paint jobs haven't been, in, because you know uh, it, it's one of the arguments I mean, not, for having Shadow and Flame involved. Mm -hmm. Well, they, yeah, they're not. They're I mean, not. It's just. Mm. They're not. Mm -hmm. You don't look at them and think. You know, when you see a, a shadow or, and flame mm -hmm. mini, you look at it and you go, wow. 
I, I want that Mini. And I think that the paint jobs aren't making people feel, for, for some of the models, not all of them, mm. I want that Mini. I think the paint job for the, for the new Smaug is fantastic, yeah, yeah. for example. Um, and will make people think, wow, I want that Mini, even though it's nearly £300. So many gold coins to paint. Uh, so many. So thanks very much for your question there, George. And uh, safe journey home, buddy. Yeah. <laughs> uh, next yeah, up, we've got Billy Fitzmorris. And Billy Fitzmorris, he's been at the tournament. He brought yep. uh, an awful army. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he brought um, all Felwogs and Borg Chieftain. Oh, right, yes. And um, didn't, yeah, it was awful. Um, and we had some fantastic entertainment on. Oh no, he had the Goblin Scribe in there as well, I think. Oh. We had some fantastic entertainment on the Saturday evening. Saturday, yeah. We'd all had our Indian. We came back to the gaming centre for some drinks. Some people were playing a, a card game called Munchkin, other people just catching up, having a chat. And we did this kind of like battle royale thing. Mm -hmm. um, I was in the card game for a while, but everyone, I think everyone there was kind of looking over and saying, increasingly, there's, there's something a bit more exciting going on over there. Yeah, trying to rush through the game. <laughs> it was very exciting. Basically, you, everybody pulled out a hero of some kind, and you worked clockwise, which was the genius part of the game. <laughs> uh, and you had to do all of your, you know, you had to do your move, your shoot, and, um, and your combats, etc. And hero, any heroics that you had in that bit. And, of, of course, this shouldn't work. Mm. This game was amazing. It was amazing. <laughs> and his Goblin Scribe nearly won it. Oh yeah, that. it's a good job that I am such a skilled player and won it with my Aragorn Strider. It's a really silly idea, but it, it works. It's you know, since it's like oh, everyone brings a hero, and so everyone's got oh, I'll bring Sauron or Treebeard or Azog, and it's like I'll bring the Goblin Scribe. It was, but it, but it nearly worked. It nearly worked. Well, Damien had Azog, and uh, it was yeah. all about making little alliances. And as soon as Damien put the the Azog on the table, I looked to sort of four players to my right and was like, we need to be a team. We need to be a team. So it, it, me and the Goblin King at, at the end, Camille Domanski's yeah. King Goblin, King Goblin, as Camille says, yes. my King Goblin, and uh, we, we we had a scrap at the end, and it was close. It was close, but uh, Goblin Scribe came third. It came, came third in both surviving to third and, and in, kill. in killing more than and any one of it. He had one Goblin that <laughs> one managed goblin to kill that, Azog and, and the White Warg, and uh, an eagle was it? Or no, no. Uh, killed. Um, Oh, Imrahil. Oh, yeah. so, I think it was Imrahil. Not bad for four points. Uh, so Billy's put, I did the chant at the end to bring back Chochon Master. <laughs> did you do that when you watched Sweet Pen Question? Did um, you do a loud Chochon Master? I, I, I did it in a quite conservative fashion in a house full of sleeping people. Can uh, you do it in a non conservative fashion now for our subscribers? <laughs> okay. Uh, can we do that together? or? No, no, this is oh, you. No oh, pressure. Well, just, just pressure. Um, One, yeah. two, three. Chocho Master! <laughs> <laughs> that was like that, that was brilliant. Almost. I hope you all joined in. Yeah. That was very, very good. One time only. <laughs> <laughs> uh, cheers guys, you made me feel ridiculous. This plan better work, James. We hope so. Hopefully see him back. So as for my question, James, after hearing how poorly the DOS source book sold, do you think it's still possible to turn the GBHL podcast into a business? Mm. Cheers again, guys, and I shall see you both next week. Very good question. Yeah. I can't imagine it sold as poorly as that. I mean it just that made me. The one, unless it sold 999 copies, mm. being so, but even that's it's not very good for a worldwide sale and mm. a print run. And you imagine that the print run must have been between 5,000 and 10,000, the first print run. Yeah, kind of a licensed film of that, you know, size as well. Um, you would imagine that, but I can't, yeah, I don't see it. I mean, mm -hmm. every, every, everybody could get out there and support their Hobbit, net, hobby, <laughs> Hobbit hobby now and go and buy a DOS source book. Yeah. Might be too little too late. But we have talked about this lately. You know, there, there can be a self, mm -hmm. um, a self hurt almost in a community where, you know, there's, oh, we're not getting any miniatures, you know, can't wait until the next releases come out. Why aren't we getting any attention? And then they come out. And, and then they come out and it's like, oh, I'll never buy that. It's fine cars. I'm never going to buy that. It's. Two pounds more expensive than last time, and ultimately, if you, if you want to be involved in the hobby, you want to be involved in the hobby. Yeah, I think somebody, I, I don't remember the name of them, but somebody posted something on the Facebook about, you know, kind of a, a realisation they'd had that had helped them to combine things that they'd, they'd realised that they weren't so much kind of a, just a wargamer as they were a collector of things, and so yeah. you, 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 if... Uh, it was suddenly a lot, a lot easier with that mentality to, th to say, "Oh, this thing costs maybe yep. more than I think it should, but you, s you can still buy it for collecting purposes." And because you know, and something that Damien said when he was talking about Smaug, of course, is you know, it's always it's, it's a lot of money, and not everyone can afford things like that. But um, you know, whatever it is, ten years down the line, he'll not miss that three hundred pounds 
Yeah. But if he doesn't, if he, you know, I have said the same thing because there are there are. I mean, I've said it in a lot of recent videos. I feel like I've got a lot of things that that I would want. But there are certain miniatures that you've got to really, and you've got to do this because when I got involved, there were still a lot of the metal miniatures that then very quickly went out of production, that were on the website that you were thinking, you know, hmm, well, I don't really need it, right? I don't need it. I'll get it another time, and then they went out of production, and then you're gutted that they are then out of production, mm -hmm. and I've started looking at it like that. If there was, if Smaug went out, would I be gutted that I couldn't get my hands on a Smaug? Yeah, it's for like you know, three times as much on eBay. Or, yeah, you know. and, and and Damien's right. Am I going to in in a few years' time? Am I going to miss the the, the money that I spent for it? No, I'll make it back. I'll work around it. Mm. So um, yeah, that's how I think about it. Um, in terms of turning the GBHL podcast into business, um, I think it's always been I, I've always been aware, and Jamie's always been aware that the market for the Hobbit strategy battle game is a lot smaller than the wargaming market and the wargaming market itself is a relatively small market but it's a big enough market to be able to make income from and there are, is evidence of course of there's only there's only a couple of examples of youtube channels um, in this market doing very well out of it which is why we mm. often refer to mini wargaming yeah. and beasts of war uh, they're, they're kind of the two that are that are up there but of course their coverage is of all war games now our primary goal of course was to support our Hobbit hobby yeah. and to bring people together who play this game and to almost capture that, that part of the market and uh, and grow that part of the market. Yeah. Would yeah. you agree that that's happened? Yeah, I think they've certainly done that. I mean, that you can kind of tell from just from the tournament attendance and uh, the, the all kind of the buzz going around from various people. I mean, uh, I went into, my, my, I'm kind of quite well known that there's no Lord of the Rings players anywhere near where I, where where I am, so you are in the world. Uh, I'm yeah, I'm, yeah. So, but <laughs> I went to I went to the the my local games workshop, and they have they have a sort of Lord of the Rings day on a uh, Wednesday evening, which was is typically only attended by maybe one or two people on a staff member at most every once in a while. But there was maybe about three or four people actually there in times, and they were um, talking about stuff they'd seen on the channel and things, That's cool. the Facebook groups and stuff, which is. You know, it's 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 a it's completely different from what it used to be, where you go in there, and you know, they'd maybe be one or two players that had, mm. you know never played a game before, and um, the staff that didn't really know as much about the rules as, as yeah, any yeah. of those. So it's I mean, even that is going to have quite a big effect. And it's clearly had a it's clearly had a, a positive a positive effect. It clearly has, and um, you know we want to keep on making it better. Um, I mean, it, you, you've got to look at how can you how can you turn it into into a business. So the YouTube advertising revenue um, is not enough for it to, to be a business at all, or to be a wage for one person, or or anything much really. But it's it's a bonus. It's you need to be getting tens of thousands. It's very of very difficult video. to make money off YouTube, really, unless you're, you know, just getting hundreds of thousands of subscribers yeah. and you've you've got to be getting to the you've got to be getting to the sort of hundreds of thousands of subscribers tens of thousands of views per video to make a reasonable income and i believe that you can make an income for maybe one person off those kind of views um that's why you see so many of these sort of gaming videos and, and let's yeah. let's play videos and well, it, very interestingly, very interestingly, one of my clients, one of my fitness clients, um, put a post on Facebook a few weeks ago, um, and her post was about her son, who apparently at like a parents' evening or something, had meant, had talked about how he wanted to be a YouTuber mm -hmm. as a career. Yeah, because people are starting to think like that. It's a very new, a very new kind of medium, isn't it? A very new area of business yeah. and there's people who make just just you know videos about a certain subject or videos or um, that are just playing through games and things but also you have much kind of uh, almost more kind of televisions like levels of productions um, mm. things like you know rocket jump that do all the uh, what's it called 
uh, video game high school series, mm. which is like a f full scale TV series almost that just happens to be on YouTube. And yeah, and like so, some people uh, go to that kind of high level of production, mm -hmm. don't they? I mean, I don't think that we'll ever go to a ridiculously high level of production because we like to get a lot of content out, and part part of that is because with there not being lots and lots of Hobbit players out there and Lord of the Rings players it keeps you in the loop of the hobby. You've always got mm. something to watch or something that's keeping you engaged. Um, you know, lots of people have said over the weekend that you're having that kind of conversation. So in terms of, you're not gonna make necessarily advertising money from just covering Lord of the Rings and The Hobbit. You might be able to make some advertising if you go into other war games that are a bigger part of the market and if you're good at that, because it's more competitive. There are more people out there that do it. Do it. Um, so that's why you know being able to dabble in other war games, you know, might be quite important from a business point of view going forward. If we had a product to sell, mm -hmm. that would be quite helpful. We've always talked about the idea of a subscription service where we did, you know, um, half of our videos. So you had seven days of content that was up on here, and then there was the equivalent amount of content that you could subscribe to for a couple of pounds a month or whatever it might be um, on a website that was kind of going into a vault, similar to how many wargaming dot com. And that, if if every single one of our subscribers signed up to something like that, it could be a business, and you guys could be paying for me and Jamie, and then hopefully potentially um, Tom and Damien to be be doing this a lot more. Oh, yeah. Actually, paying it as almost like a part time job. Um, but that's a little bit, a little bit way down the line. I'm I'm not discouraged. Um, it just means that you know it does become even more important that we do consider yeah. other war games. And of course, with the the. The, we don't know what place the game is going to be in in the next couple of years as well. So that's, the tournament, that's the the tournaments could be quite important as well. Yeah. I mean, mm -hmm. they, it, it does cost a lot to have have this and to pay for the food and everything. So it's you, you would you would have to be in a position where you could run um, a couple per month that you were getting sort of mm -hmm. towards fifty in order in order for that to be viable. But as a as a bit of a bonus to pay for us going to other tournaments, it's it's not been too bad. So so next up we've got David Whitaker. He's pulled. Original cast back and uploaded in record time. <laughs> yeah, uh, that didn't happen this week. Um, but Mr. Alex, are you doing a fine job standing in? Yes. I think uh, you would be very a very good plant here. Um, all right. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. Guest host because, I mean, all of our conversations, you can talk in a lot of depth. Interestingly, about things that I have no idea about, mm. which is quite like Damien. So that could be an interest. That could be a long video. I've been kind of terrified of the plant here for the last couple of weeks. I've kind of been watching the first sort of <laughs> five, ten minutes of it, and then because, uh, and then and then trying to avoid the rest of it because it's very spoiler heavily. It's this very, very spoiler. So I'm quite looking forward to it. I'm going to watch the film uh, in the cinema at some point in the next week or two. Uh, and then go back and watch about five hours of plans here. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> over a weekend. And it is—I mean, it's better when there's, there's the two of us together. But it's not always possible because, of course, there are not paid slots for us to do this. And we're just trying to do it in our spare time. Yeah. You know, you know now I'm on a tight, tight thing because mm -hmm. uh, Jane's at home today. It's just after a weekend tournament where I've basically taken three days out of our life, mm -hmm. um, and she's not very well. So it's literally, you know, where can we fit in? what we need to do and that's uh, that's how we do it so uh, he's put I've missed a pair of you accompanying my Sunday afternoon hobby time yes yeah, so apologies for the video not being up Sunday he's put, I'm putting together a blue and white Rohan army which you may have spotted on the Facebook group I have seen that he said I'm going to say they're from Snowborn despite it being a river and not a place in the books but Theoden mentions the riders of Snowborn in the movie that's very cool yes but none of them came to the battle I think so that was <laughs> yeah, none have come. Cowards. Mind. So you're, that's that's what he's doing. It's basically the army of the dead before they got dead. The, yeah. the ones that hid from the battle. Mm. Uh, mm. Mm. Snowborn. I have to no alliances with you guys. It's but as much as I love Lord of the Rings, it's nice to create a force not entirely in keeping with the fluff. Well, I, I think you've done a good job there in creating a force that is that mm. has got a kind of fluff element to it. Mm. You you have done that. He's put uh, the trouble the trouble being I'm limited with on the heroes. Yeah, that's your issue. Yeah. He's put, so do you think using the Rohan hero models with head swaps would be good enough way to suffice as counts as, since 90% of the model is there? Lop Amos head off, pop Aragorn's on, use Amos profile, but call him Steve of Snowborn. <laughs> <laughs> Rest in peace, Chot Chow Master. <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> um, I think so. I don't see yeah, any problem with that. It's um, still the model. Mm -hmm. Especially if you're going for a kind of a, a theme thing. That, um, obviously, a lot of large Rohan armies can't really work without Arkham Brand. Uh, yep. They don't. And you, know, you only have Aramir as your very good sort of fighting hero, so 
I would, then, if you came to my tournament and you were like, I've got a fluffy army, um, I've converted the Rohan heroes, so they are some, but they are clear, so for example, mm -hmm. you've got Aemer's body, yeah, you've got another head on it, but it's Aemer's, Aemer's body, horse, that kind of thing. As long as in your army list, you know, yeah, you can, you can put in brackets, um, Steve of Snowborn, <laughs> you can put that in brackets, but as long as you're putting down Aemer, um, Knight of Pelennor, and as long as you're making sure your opponent yeah, is aware. you have to be very clear with them that just, you know, this, you know, this guy, I'm calling him this, but he's Arkham Brand and, uh, Exacto Mundo. So yeah, I wouldn't have a problem with that at all. So next up, we've got a real life Hobbit. A real life Hobbit. It says, hey guys, my question this week is not really Hobbit related, uh, but I'd just like to know simply, what do you think to, to Billy Boyd's The Last Goodbye song uh, to go over the credits? Personally, I like it and much prefer it over the, over Ed Sheeran's uh, I See Fire. Well, I do like Ed Sheeran, I have to say, mm -hmm. um, but I think that the last goodbye is very good. Mm -hmm. I haven't actually listened to it. I've been, I, I saw one trailer for The Hobbit, and I've been avoiding videos ever since. <laughs> uh, but um, I, I can, I can see you it might being cry. Quite, yeah, I, I can, I can see because um, he did the the, the the song sort of midway through Return of the King, mm -hmm. and and he's. Uh, I think around the same time I'd listened to a lot of his other kind of stuff that his band had done. That's right, yeah. He's so very good, mm -hmm. and it's a very emotional song, mm -hmm. and um, if you watch the video for it, there are lots of sort of emotive Lord of the Rings clips mixed in with emotive uh, Hobbit clips, yeah. which means that, of course, you know, if you're big fans like us... <laughs> it's almost definitely the end of, uh, of Middle-earth on screen, uh, in terms of the Peter Jackson yeah. Middle-earth. Uh, yeah, yeah. Um, Almost certainly. So yeah, I, I, I very much like it. Uh, I've tried to, you know, as I'm walking around the house, whack it on my Spotify and stuff, because I've got it on my... Oh, yeah. uh, and put it through the Sonos system, but Jane does not like it. She, oh. she thinks it's depressing, so <laughs> I can imagine it being a bit polarising. And next up we've got Peter Sanson. He's put, hello, getting harder and harder to think of SBG related questions, so an off-topic question. That means that you are becoming educated, my friend. Yeah. He's put, what did you think of the teaser trailer for the new Star Wars movie? Is, but also, does it help you if I share your videos to my account, even if no one watches it there? Have fun. Yes, it does, because it's uh, interaction. It's mm. any interaction. Comments, likes, shares. Um, so just statistics. To, yeah, because yeah, mm -hmm. it, it helps the algorithm of, um, of why mm. things get watched. Um, in terms of the Star Wars trailer, did you see it? Are you a Star Wars fan? I did, yes. I did see it. It's... Uh it's quite interesting, of course, because J.J. Abrams has also done the Star Trek one, and there's a similar aesthetic, I think, running through it. It, it, it looks like a J.J. Abrams film. I thought it um, looked very cool. Yes. The was. CGI was much better than the, mm -hmm. the the last three, you know, the one, two, and three, um, which I have thought was a massive step backwards. Yeah. I mean, it doesn't, it doesn't show very much. Um, it just shows a lot of... It doesn't really show very much of who's who and... Uh, but, um, no, it, it's definitely a teaser. Mm -hmm. It's not. It, it, it is a teaser, and it has. But it's done its job because mm -hmm. it's made me look forward to these movies next yeah. year and I make mean, me feel like it's going to be better. It kind of reassures you that the Millennium Falcon still looks exactly like the Millennium Falcon, and that X wings still look exactly like X wings. And Which you, you, even that's though, no better way to you know yeah. turn on a nerd. You know, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> than, I know what that is. <laughs> Stormtroopers are slightly different, but the same. And I know peop a lot of people have not been that happy about the that the lightsaber. That you know they came up with, oh, but, because of the design, but, <laughs> because it would slide through. And, yeah. Well, people say that, thing, but I don't. Know, I think it's the you can see on the hilt that there's a bit that sticks out. So he's not just going to like slide his hand all the way up it. But at the same time, that's just as just as easily as someone holding a regular lightsaber wouldn't just go and grab the blade. But uh, mm -hmm. it makes it look more like a sword, which I think in the original trilogy there was something that um, George Lucas had had told off the actors for swinging them around because no, these are like big heavy claymores. Um, which is what the the original lightsabers were started off as, and then of course they became kind of like twirling batons in the in the, in the new trilogy. Uh, yep. So I think it's going to go back more to being sort of sword fighting. Yeah, that'd be cool. That'd be cool. Uh, so next question we've got. I am Jamrod or Jurod. Uh, Thirteen. He's put. Hey guys, it's been a few weeks since I last asked a question, but I was busy with my university exams. Good luck. I hope you did well. He's put. But that's all done now, so it's time for some fun. Yes, it is. Just a quick question this week regarding fell beasts. Forgive me if this has already been asked before, but what fell beast should one take? It would seem that a horned fell beast would be beneficial for greater hurl range and 
before punching through those beefy dwarven battle lines. Also, an armoured fell beast has a slightly higher survivability. Are either of these options viable over a normal fell beast, or are they just not worth the points cost? Cheers, lads. They're they're usually viable, but the fell beast itself is so cheap, essentially, that um, you yeah, usually. I mean, like a, a named fell beast is 170 points anyway. That's about the same as any one of the most expensive kind of heroes, so adding more points on them you're going to reduce your numbers for uh, an inch of extra hurl distance yeah. or... I mean the survivability is good because they can be killed by heroes mm. reasonably easily, but again heroes might often be going for the wraith instead. Mm. Um, yes. And it's the... yeah, and the, you know, you could go for your armoured your armored and that's going to help you against you know, certain bow fire and stuff like that, but really Really, and because 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 fell beasts are already cheap, and you've just made yeah. this point. Because fell beasts are already cheap, the moment that you start putting them up and you want it as part of an all fell beast army, then uh, that's not going to be great. But but you know maybe maybe doing it you know if you've got one and you need that to be your big beefy thing. If you're fighting against other fell beasts, take horn fell beasts and then just hurl <laughs> this other fell beast around. <laughs> uh, um, I'm yeah. sure. Did uh, James Braun do that? To I think Ed? it was. Yeah, I think uh, a few, a couple of years ago. I think when Ed, I, th you, I think somebody else had mentioned in a video when when it was when all the monster rules only just come out. Yeah. So yeah, I hope that answers your question. Make sure you ask a question next week. Next up, we've got Barry O'Neill, and he's yes. he, he's, uh, he's left for Ireland this morning after being at the the the, the Stockport League final event. Yeah. Over the weekend, yes, he's he got his there and back again award, which instead three of three times in a row, yeah. <laughs> well, he's been three times. I thought, you know, I'm not going to give him a certificate this time. I'm going to buy him a pint. So I'm thinking of like wallpaper them all over. <laughs> we did say he was thinking of like placemats. We do actually yeah. have two, two of the uh, DOS 2.0 ones, so we could always just give him them. Yeah, have a full set. Uh, and he says, uh, "Congrats on the new house, Jamie, uh, wherever he is. Uh, uh, I'm sure the the games room will feature regularly in future vids. Yeah, it will. Uh, no question this week." Just checking uh, in, and if uh, you film this on Thursday, uh, <laughs> I'll be seeing you tomorrow. Uh, keep up with the great work. Well, so, unfortunately, mm -hmm. unfortunately, Jamie um, couldn't be at the tournament this week. I was absolutely gutted. Yeah, that for was him. horrible. Uh, just mm. he spent the whole year. He's been at every tournament this year. Every tournament this year, just gets pipped to third place because of Callum's little run. So this is really his his chance to pit back, and he only needs like one good result really, because mm -hmm. his his two kickers aren't great, and then he could not get out of work because of the holiday set. So he just couldn't get out of work, and he's he's devastated. I'm devastated for him as well. I mean, you were hosting this one kind of on my own, so purely to try and so that he could still play as well. Well, I, I offered to do it when when the guys from Cheltenham couldn't run the final, yeah. and I was like, it's too good opportunity to miss. We've run two great tournaments here. Let's run it. And he was like, I don't want to run a league final. I've got a chance. I said, I'll run it. He said, I will do this by myself. And then he he could not he could not make it. So such a shame. However, he did come on Friday. And he came up here to film speak for any question as I was getting stuff ready. But he was delayed because of the trains, and then I had to run and get the trophies. Um, because they've been engraved, and when I, by the time I'd come back, because we had crazy hailstones, didn't we? That was yeah, that was mad. Uh, we had crazy hailstones, yeah, uh, so traffic side. was awful. So it took me an hour to do a five-minute journey, and by that time he'd, he'd already he'd already gone. So that's why he's not here. Uh, thanks very much for coming, Barry, and I'm sure we'll see you again soon. Have a good Christmas. Next up, we got Doctor Dan. He's put hi guys, congrats on fe reaching 50. Bit late, I know. That's all right. Listen, better late than never. So, a question for this week: When is your next battle report coming? <laughs> Used to come thick and fast, and thoroughly enjoyed the Black Gate. Uh, well, that's just not happened because of how life is at the moment. Of course, this, as we've said before, this isn't our job, and we, we've done pretty good to be able to get out on average, sort of one big battle report per week. And then maybe like a smaller battle report or a Delius Warbands, or some weeks you've had two. But with Jamie not being able to do any filming at all, um, because he's been moving house, he can't do any video uploading because he's not got the internet yet. Run up to Christmas as well. Yeah. Run up to Christmas, so we're all busy with that. Um, uh, Tom and Damien tend to only get together to film the plant here, um, and they don't live really close to each other, so that's a bit of a journey. And I think mm. people think that me and Jamie live closer than we do. Mm. You know, it's it's an hour train journey for 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 Jamie. You know, yeah, it, it, it adds it's, up. Yeah. It adds up, and um, 
you know, that's an hour here, hour back. Now, yeah, it's a quicker drive for me. It's only like a 15, 20 minute drive from, for me to him. Um, but then again, that's 40 minutes. December as well is a tough time for outdoor fitness, which is one of the parts of our business. And it means that we have to really, really focus on getting everything ready for January. So that's why you've not seen as many of those. But also, would you be interested in doing a battle report of the Battle of Dale, War of the Ring with uh, Brand and Dane, or the Corsairs attacking Southern Gondor, Corsairs and Evil Men versus uh, Umbar and Grey Company, Army of the Dead and Fiefdoms in the future, or the best lads, Dan. Why not? I don't think we'll be doing War of the Ring. Mm. Damien and Tom thought they'd do the War of the Ring. Yes, I'd give it a go, yeah. Mm. I mean, I, I have I have the book and I've got some stuff, but it's it's a strange game because the rules, the system is okay. It's It doesn't really feel very War of the Rings in this, the, the system as a, as a battle system, mm. but the big problem with War of the Ring is the profiles and the profile balance because mm. the way they transferred it over is they, rather than try and transfer over how... Um, how, how various armies in, in SBG behave, they just sort of transfer over the stat lines. For example, so elves have you know their high fight value, and their but they're still only defense five and their high courage, but they pay points through the nose for for those for having the high fight value, which helps in SBG, but is not that useful in mm. like um, War of the Ring. War of the Apparently, Ring. it's a very easily broken game. Yeah, very very easily broken. Easily broken game. I don't think we'll be doing it as War of the Ring, but in terms of um, scenario-based battles, you will see more of those um, over the next year. Almost certainly, we'll be doing things like right. Okay, um, this is going to be the battle of such and such, or you know, this is this theme. So do keep an eye out for it. Make sure you keep watching all of the videos, and I'm sure we'll get some battle reports out soon. Uh, so next up, we got Seth Lipper. He's put. I bought one Desolation of Smell source book thingy. I haven't used it, but I intend to when I get back into the Lord of Rings Hobbit. So that's one accounted yeah, for. Yeah, yeah, Two yeah. accounted for. Yeah, uh, I've got I've got the one, and there's there is one in my in one of the local comic book shops that you know could buy just for the sake of helping. <laughs> Supporting your hobby, hobby. Give it to somebody on the street yeah, randomly. You could take it from the nine hundred ninety nine to the thousands. So yeah, you can't yeah, say that yeah. they've only sold hundreds. You get some kind of special prize. <laughs> um, he's put. Uh, probably Hobbit since uh, Games Workshop is stealthily and slowly removing their Lord of the Rings range. Well, stuff has gone and then come back. Mm, some stuff has, yes. Uh, or that they, you know, they found more, like <laughs> more they, work they, they, in they, the they listing Dalamere's as 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 Grimbolds and uh, things like that. But yeah, it's 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 not so much I guess that they're trying to sneakily take them away. Is that there's only so many things that they've transferred over to Finecast. And because they're not making metal things anymore, the, they've only really got left what they had to begin with. So, things that they had loads of, things that you know, that, that that were either because they came out early or they were, you know, more mass produced, they'll run out a lot slower. But mm. some of the things that that came out more recently had small runs. Things like I guess Thryden and, and uh, yeah. Gildor when he was he was around, they only came out from like a white dwarf for us a small yep. source book had a short run and so they never made very many of them um, and so they disappear first earliest and of course they do uh, of course they do and if you know if you if you want to if you don't want the hobbit to sort of go a similar way of things disappearing you you've got to get out there and buy it although having having things done fine cast means that yeah. you can kind of produce them and because they make them they, they, they're still uh, making the models out of the same material that they made them with so it's just yeah it's yeah much easier so next up we've got Larry Miller and he's just been at um, <clears throat> this tournament Lovely to see him again. He bought, <laughs> was it like an unarmed sort of themed of oh, the dwarves yeah. when they go into Lake Town? Yeah. Uh, it was something like that, wasn't it? Sp very interesting. Spends the entire tournament t talking to you about all, all the most broken combinations you can think of and then just takes and the then most takes terrible fluff. The, the most can. terrible thing. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's lovely lad. He's put, so as the league nears its close, what's been your favourite memories of this year's tournaments? Ooh, that's a hard one. Um, God, I've been at a lot of a lot of them. <laughs> I've been at more than I ever been before, but still, probably only about five. I think I've been to. Um, but yes, it's. I mean, a lot of time it's just seeing the people. It's it's people that you've seen around a lot of satellite things, and it's actually getting to play, you know, or getting to play somebody's or some somebody's uh, signature army that you've kind of theorised about, and then. But uh, I'm trying to think of a, a particular moment that was. I'm trying to think of a few. I think if I if I go back to okay, so the first one this year was Huddersfield. I think the most spectacular thing there was a game versus James Braun, where it was my first time ever playing against the Wizard, which was Saruman, and uh, he absolutely bossed me and had beaten me, and then somehow 
I, all everything was dismounted. I had hardly anything left, mm. and um, there was a massive point swing as I somehow managed to kill Saruman. Yeah, yeah. After he decided to use his staff and yeah, yeah. go combat wizardy two hundred oh, yeah, staff to, to finish me off. Mm -hmm. And there was a dice roll with everybody sort of crowded round. I've never felt dizzy with a dice roll. That was pretty good in that first tournament. A lot of it's been a social thing. So this this weekend, for example, I had there was a huge amount of relief for me on Saturday mm. at how well everything had gone, and that was a really good feeling. In the evening, I let my hair down, which I wasn't planning to do. I let my hair down and enjoyed the night because day one had gone so well, and that was a good yeah, feeling. Really. Just sort of seeing everybody around. It's the culmination of the community over the year, wasn't it? Just yes, yeah, it can evolve. Yeah, it's all kind of encompassing. I remember probably one of the most, one of the most ind individually sort of interesting moments was not actually doing any game, but it was probably in um, Throne of Skulls. This the, your kind of epic battle of what was it, uh, Alfred versus uh, the what was his name? Um, oh, the el Elven character. What was oh that? no, it was um, it was was it not the Goblin Scribe versus it was Goblin Scribe versus Lindir. Lindir rolling uh, foam dice. I would rather not talk about that. But it was, it was just so amazingly cinematic in terms of it wasn't just a case that you lost, it was an amazingly cinematic way that you'd used your might point to, to win the fight and then you passed this fate roll and then didn't have the might roll to, to you know, yeah. win the next couple of fights. And it was awful. <laughs> <laughs> no, that was, yeah, those things are good. Yeah, I'd say my first experience of throwing the skulls and the night out, that was that was pretty amazing. It's an awesome place, Warhammer World, isn't it? It's yeah, yeah, and the bar and the food and everything, yeah, just really good. Um, no, the, the, uh, the, there have been lots of sort of standout -y moments, I think, lots of standout moments, nights that we've stayed at Damien's and Selwig was really good with um, with those guys. So yeah, it's, it's all been it's all been pretty amazing. It's been a great year. And hopefully this weekend did, did the year justice. I think so. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Next up we've got Zarfai Engel. Oh. Right. Uh, again, missed two weeks. Darn. Alas, uh, a new question this week. Uh, well, it's more of a remark. Hmm. I don't know if that really counts for the Luton, is it? Maybe. Uh, I'm going to see the new Hobbit movie on December the 10th. Uh, here in Germany, we are earlier than you in Britain. Uh, don't I'll rub it in. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't be able to see it that week anyway. Too busy. In, yeah, is it? Um, I'll be seeing it at midnight, and I've been counting the, di the hours since the 25th. Uh, I've probably annoyed everyone around me, but what can you do? Looking forward to, to your review. Oh, thank you very much. Well, yeah. make sure no spoilers on the Facebook group. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no spoilers, please. Now, we're going to go watch it it's on... Um, it's quite dangerous. There's a lot of videos that have been appearing, even the last couple of days, saying, <laughs> oh, major spoilers, and then a thumbnail, which you can want to not look at. And Yeah, the uh, admins have been hot on it. I'm part of the admin group mm -hmm. for the Great British Hobbit League Facebook group. And um, there's lots of chain threads where they've had to like quickly delete things and even banning people because it's the same people putting stuff up as well. Yeah. So, Which is a bit of a shame. Um, yeah, we're going on Friday morning. We're going on Friday morning slash lunchtime. Me, Stephen Crow, Jay Finnegan, um, and I think Jamie's coming down as well. So that should be good. Um, looking forward to that. Uh, next up, we've got Kurt Leach. He's put, what do you think of six crossbows and Vrasku out shooting 18 watches of Karna because Fury, Fury keeping the crossbows alive? You'll be able to quickly do the maths in your mind. Yeah, yeah. Um, would it be better not giving watches of Karna a bow and using them, not giving them a bow? And using them only for fighting, and use warriors of Karna for shooting. Hmm. The warriors of Karna, they're the just regular Harajim with some kind of upgrade on they or yeah, with an upgrade which makes them the same points as a Watcher of Karna, which is why that doesn't. Mm -hmm. No, I mean the, the interesting thing about Watchers of Karna is that they are very good in combat and very good at shooting, but um, but they are of course they are, they are fragile because of their defense four. They used to be defense three when they first came out, and so they weren't probably that as as scary. Mm. Um, but so how many crossbows was there? What? There was six crossbows six, six, and Vrasku, so that's eight shots a turn. Mm -hmm. So four are going to be hitting. You're only wounding on fours. That'd be a big thing. Four, they'll, yeah. They'll so be wounding you should you be on, killing two a turn, and they'll be wounding you on sixes. So you're killing mm -hmm. two a turn. Mm -hmm. um, so Isengard kills two a turn. Then you got eighteen watches of Karna shooting on three Kana. plus. Three plus. If they don't move. So, so yeah. six hitting. Uh, Twelve, twelve hitting. So twelve hitting. Yeah, twelve hitting. Uh, so you expect two again, two wounds. But if you've got fury, if you've got fury, it's uh, two wounds. Well, two two wounds, and then potentially one more for the poison. Um, with you know rerolling the rerolling yeah, ones so to poison. So maybe yeah, two and a sixth 
Uh, but then you've got the might of Rasku as well. Yeah, and yeah, because he can call heroic accuracies to get to them, and um, they're they're good in combat. It depends. It it kind of depends what you want your army to do. If as this is kind of thing, but, but writing armor list, you need it needs to be focused on doing a particular type of job. A lot of people have, oh, I've got a whole bunch of shooty guys, and I've got a whole bunch of really great combat guys, and then they kind of like move the combat guys forward. They try and play it like units, mm -hmm. uh, and they leave the shooty guys behind to shoot. Uh, and so you send like a th like a third or half of your army against all of theirs, and they eat you, and then they come and eat the the archers. So if you're if you're doing like a if if you're going for just an all out shooty army, it's better to have watchers of karma with bows than haradrim with bows. They cost the um, same as well. Cost the same. They cost the same. With the, war, with you the, just the have the higher attacks. Um, yeah. Yeah, I would agree with that. And. Uh, and yeah, it looks like it'd be a pretty close fight, but it wouldn't surprise me if the Isengard win but, with the might. But they'd be very, very competent as a as just a, a combat troop that you added if you if you were, you know, just going forward or didn't want to spend that yeah. many points on them there, or wanted to use things that don't allow you to have that fifty percent bow limit. You yeah, they want to sort of ally in other things. There. Like your corsairs and yeah, stuff like that. they're very competent, very good at defending flanks and all that sort of thing. They yeah, are indeed very good unit, very uh, mm -hmm. <laughs> broken, <laughs> cheap. Um, Next up, we got who else? But Haldies. But uh, what do you guys think is the fluffiest army list that you could make for each of your respective army lists? And in general, the list doesn't have to be competitive, non-competitive. It just has to be strong fluff. Uh, we've got, got the Fellowship. We've got Dorin's company. They're fluffy. I mean, your Rohan's pretty fluffy anyway. To begin with. I mean, it's, apart from if you take if you take, away, if, you take if you take away all the uh, the Knights of Errol, King, uh, yeah, the Sons of Errol, and it, these royal knights are yeah. mentioned. Mm -hmm. This royal card of knights is mentioned in the books, uh, not the sons of. Get, get away with it that way, I suppose. <laughs> maybe. Um, yeah, I mean, maybe just it's Rohan is a fluffy arm, a, a fluffyish mm -hmm. army anyway. It's you know, Erkan Brand is a character, and AMA is a character, and Eowyn is a character. So, you know, people talk, but, but then people then say, well, you know, those are the ones that you would take if you want to make it fluffy. Then you take Thaed and, and yeah. stuff like that. But, you know. In my Hiles, it just it just comes down to my hero selection. I mean, um, I used to take Gil Gallard a lot, and then and also the twins, and obviously they're probably not around at the same sort of. So well, they could be because they live for, but it's um, yeah. So it's it's more if if I if I was taking the twins, I'd have to probably take Eristor more often than Gildor, mm. and yeah, I'd have to have to start taking Elrond, which would be uh, an unhappy time. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. Uh, William. Okay, so next up we've got Joe White, and Joe White has put. Let's see. Is that one there? Yeah, it is. Uh, so, hey guys, uh, left uh, not left a question in a while, but uh, having no internet this week. Uh, is question you know, having but no internet. But this week's question is: Can you put four models around Grima to stop him moving, therefore leaving him at the back of the board? Uh, yes, you can. So you can't you can't necessarily charge him, but you can uh, just block him off very easily. It's 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 a way of doing things. Although it does mean that we want them to be very cheap troops. Yeah, <laughs> Grima's, Grima's not got rid of not getting rid of your might, but he is taking away four of your guys for the whole game. Um, yeah, if you've got like late town, mm -hmm. well, these late town militia. Might, yeah, <laughs> let's say you've got four of these late town militia, assuming that they're not going to be expensive four points per model, then it's worth it. <laughs> or you've got some hobbits. Yeah, fatty bulger and one of the ten point hobbits just just. Just going completely against the fluff. Just, yep. This is this is my Grima defence. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it's very, very situation. Or even if you just leave them there for like a couple of turns. If you're moving forward, leave them there for a couple of turns. That by the time you get into the fights and you're using your might to do their heroics, he's <laughs> got some time to catch up. Uh, yes. Uh, it's cool. Most 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 people try and get rid of uh, Grima um, by sorcerer's blasting them. <laughs> if they've got a wizard. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so next up we've got Wobbachika! Wobbachika! Can you do a Wobbachika for us? You've done a Cha Cha Master. I have done. Uh, Wobbachika. Wobbachika. Wobbachika! Wobbachika! <laughs> uh, he's put, didn't realise last week's question was that popular. Oops. Uh, yeah, I think he asked a question that has been in a speak planning question FAQ. Yeah, thank you, yeah. Um, he's put, glad to see I've stolen Cha Cha Master's cra uh, crown. It sits very well on my head. <laughs> uh, my first question this week is hopefully not one you've answered so far. What do you guys want for Christmas? SPG and non-SPG related, of course. What do I want for Christmas? I don't want a lot. We've got the yeah. we've got the wedding coming up, so uh, I haven't asked for anything. 
I, I think the one thing I did mention is I did want Bernard Cornwell's uh, Ang Anglo-Saxon Chronicles series of books. Okay. Mm -hmm. And that was that. That's what I want. Yeah. Good for the, when we when we try Saga. How about yourself? Uh, I've I've been having I've, I don't know the the, the 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 question is I've had a terrible time not really knowing what to what is. I've been <laughs> I've been been, been a, a terrible uh, a terrible person to my family this year by, by just just every time I get asked I like, well, you know uh, but I've yeah, kind I've of been with these new Hobbit ones I've almost kind of been trying to wait till the rules come out to see what would be the most useful thing but of course the rules are not going to come out for till next next weekend and then it's kind of everyone's It'll having panics and running around <laughs> throwing around. but take the gamble you'd be like oh well, you know I think these will be good. <laughs> I quite like when you see the rules, you'd yeah. be like, "No!" I think yeah. one of the things I mentioned to somebody was one of these daylight lamps to help start help with your kind of painting. Because uh, that's a good idea. Hmm, that's a very good uh, daylight lamp. <laughs> Writing that one down. That's good. Um, in terms of SBG, what would I pick up for SBG? Mm, I'm not getting anything. I, I wouldn't ask for anything for SBG for Christmas at the moment. Mm. Uh, I might get some of these new, new release these new elves and stuff because. Uh, I can't come up with a new idea for armies without it also being elves. <laughs> but, um, the yeah. next part of the question. Mm -hmm. All right. We've got secondly, if each GBHL host was a character from the Hobbit films, who would be who? Is GBHL Tom Keeley due to his dashing handsomeness? <laughs> well, interesting. We we have we have done this in the car journey before, yeah. and I think that um, when it was done, we did Lord of the Rings as well, and I think I can remember. That, if I remember rightly, if I remember rightly, that Jamie was Gimli, and I was Legolas. Okay. And that Tom was Tom Pippin, and mm, yeah, I'm in trouble. I've got to get. I've got to get back in a minute. <laughs> oh dear. <laughs> uh oh. Um, yeah, I did say I was just nipping out to let you guys in the gaming centre. Oh dear, see. To my channel, I'll get back, I'll get told off, and this was for you. Um, I, I'm sure I can remember. Priorities, right? <laughs> What's that? You got your priorities, right? Uh, yeah. Uh, not. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I'm sure that Tom was Pippin, and was Damien Denethor? Denethor. I can't remember. From the Hobbit movies, I'm not sure, but that would be does, an interesting Does, he, does he throw himself off a lot of tall buildings? Uh, um. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, why was he Denethor? I can't remember. But I think what would be more interesting is to put it to the community. What do you guys? Who do you guys think that we are from the Lord of the Rings or Hobbit movies? Because we've had profiles, like gaming profiles. Yeah. And just you know, a lot of them were silly, weren't they? Apart yeah. from the ones that said that I was strength ten and defense ten and fight ten, because obviously I'm nails. So. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm not going to complain because he's just going to push me over. Uh, <laughs> Um, okay, so thank you very much for your for your question, and we'll put that out there to the community. Who do you think that the GBHL hosts are from the movies? So next up, we've got H.W. Russell. He's put, hey guys, I was wondering if lances can be used as spear support once they're dismounted. Uh, no, they can't. There is uh, one type of troop, the, the Haradrim Raiders and um, a Serpent Guard, because mm -hmm. they have a thing that's called a War Spear, mm -hmm. and it's something that when you're, when you're mounted, it counts as a lance, and when you're on foot, it counts as a spear, but they're the only ones, so... If you're on foot, a spear is a lance is kind of useless, other than looking interesting. Um, Did you hear that? That was definitely a, mm -hmm. a kind of like a GBHL Jamie esque um, yeah. answer. Just saying. Yeah. Just saying. Just saying. Uh, <laughs> uh, so that means that we can move on to the next question, which is Vincent, 1989. He's put, congrats on number 50. Thank you very much, buddy. I hope you go on for a while, um, a while to come. Otherwise, I don't know what I'll paint to. I'm sure we will try. And this has become this has become my hobby as well so doing this is is like part of my hobby so um so yeah expect to see more of me um he's put what's gbhl plans for the new year what can we look forward to seeing keep up the good work i know that we've been working on um getting everything together to do the fellowship campaigns mm. Some fellowship remember you're talking about that yeah yep we're looking to do that um we need to do another season of middle earth's deadliest and we will need to do middle earth's deadliest monster or middle earth's deadliest heroes which we're thinking of. Um, a four-way battle companies is something we're thinking of where we actually bring in players that are in the area or like someone could turn up like yeah. yourself and we tell you, right, we're up to this number of points now and you come down and we actually play against people like that and bring in other companies. Um, we've got lots of things in the pipeline, so keep watching. Oh, we're also going to be doing a lot of the source book reviews, um, so like right. give, doing like Kingdoms of Men Week 
um, All right, yeah. breaking everything down, which should be good. That'll be Jamie and I. Just, 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 just in time for you to, to entice you before they all go out of production. Yes. <laughs> um, next up, we've got. I don't know if you know, I'm ra racing through them now. <laughs> <laughs> the clock is ticking. Uh, thank you very much for helping yeah. me with this, by the way. Oh, that's right. Um, David has actually brought down um, the ba old Battle of Five Armies. Yes, 10 mil? Was, is it 10 mil, 15 mil? Yeah, uh, 10 mil. 10 yeah, mil. So it was uh, based on the kind of Warmaster rules. It was, uh, came out around the same time that um, the first source books, when they first got the license for the books and could do kind of Hobbit stuff and things as well. Mm -hmm. Although someone was saying that the re one of the things they got the license for the film for for SPG was one of the requirements was if they also did another different type of system based on it as well. I yeah, think yeah. someone was saying. Um, so yeah, so it's one game in the box that contains like all the elves, all the goblins, all the wargs, and um, and we were gonna we were gonna do that. We were gonna either try and play it. Um, depending, I didn't know whether Jane was working or not today, but she's not very well today, so that's why I uh, can't do long. Um, we were gonna try and play it for a Let's Try Tuesday, and then. I, when I came in before I said we'll try and unbox it for a Let's Try Tuesday, but I don't think we'll have time. Yeah. But, can I just say, it was, lovely, it was lovely to see it, and mm -hmm. I can't wait to play it. And, if anybody out there owns the Battle of Five Armies box set and does not want it, please contact me at <laughs> ilovewargaming at gmail.com. And uh, maybe we we'll come to an arrangement, because I'm looking for it. Okay, um, so Avatar of Odin, he's put, haha, <laughs> sorry about my name guys, when picking it. Oh, that's what, he's changed his name. <laughs> All right. It's, but I, I wasn't predicting anybody ever having to pronounce it. I believe the important part, coinus, would sound like coinus, based on the ancient, oh, I got it right there. Oh, well, the yeah. Original ancient Greek, which is, well, never mind. That's not going to help, I suspect. <laughs> if you still read this, I have since changed my name. This, of course, is the hobbyist known formally of coinus oh. of Pom Polemo... Not doing so well with that one. Uh. Polemocrates. Polemocrates. There we go. Homo Cartes, I don't know. This week's question, given that one of you plays a skirmishing cavalry force and the other is um, less charmed of that play style, um, what, mm, you say that, Jamie, Jamie used to say to me, because I, I beat him in a lot of our early battle reports, and he used to say um, it's because he wasn't playing it how he um, played at tournaments, um, he said, which is that kind of move, shoot yeah. with his elves, like shoot, 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 shoot. Run away, move, run away into woods. Move, mm. shoot, move, when you get close. Nature's wrath. It's not a very exciting game to watch, though. But it's just you know. <laughs> no, it's not. It's not. Um, which is one of the reasons why I've sort of upped my ratio of Sons of Ale recently. Yeah. <laughs> um, he's put. What do you feel is the correct etiquette would be for such an army in competitive play as well as, as well as a friendly play? After all, one wouldn't expect normal archers to charge straight in, uh, either retreating for as long as possible. Cavalry archers just happen to be better at that. On the other hand, running away very slowly, diminishing the enemy force for two hours isn't great fun for either player. I'd imagine. I'd agree. Uh, then your question cuts off, so I'm really sorry that I can't answer the rest of that. Um, in terms of correct etiquette, well, a lot of you've got to remember that I have. You, my learning to play the game has been very visual yeah. for you lot. <laughs> like when I when I got involved in the channel, I had literally only just learned to play. So of course you're also learning to win, and you're looking at it from. Well, I was looking at it from just a tactical mm -hmm. point of view, like a strategic and tactical point of view. Anyway, you know well, what would you do in this situation? Well, of, yeah. of course I'm gonna. This is my advantages. Mm -hmm. But yes, I would agree. Doing it for a whole game is not exciting. I tend not to do that. I tend to do it, make my opponent make a mistake, get into better positions, and then crush them! It, I guess it depends on what the game is. I mean, if, 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 if it's just a, a casual game, um, and depending on the attitude of the players, you know, if, you, if, if, if it's quite clear that you're kind of playing in a, a tournament style, let's see how, if this army could beat this army, then if, you know, that's going to be good. But if you're just trying to have like a fun game, mm. you kind of don't want to... Because you know, I've, I've got an army that's that can be quite shooty and quite hide at the back, and you always feel a bit terrible when you're just staying there doing that, because um, yeah, you know you're not giving your opponent a particularly fun game. Um, but at the same time, even at a tournament, because um, I, I find what if if uh, if it's if I don't think if if I think that I can probably beat this army in combat, mm. then I'll probably stand and shoot at it for a few turns and then kind of go forward because yeah. if, if I think I'm more likely to win then. Uh, and if 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 you know if you're if it's only usually if I'm if I'm doing well and I've got a chance to do very well, I tend to play a bit harder. Yeah. But and the things. But if 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 you're kind of mid table, you're just trying to have you know a fun game. It's yeah. You can 
Wow, we've got loads of questions. Got loads of questions. Okay. <laughs> right, I'll shut up. No, no, no. <laughs> I, was, I, I was just looking then. I was just scrolling down. I was like, wow, there's yeah. a, there's a lot of questions. So we're we're going to be reasonably concise now, I think. Um, so sorry to anybody who is from this point onwards, but we are we're over an hour. Speak yeah. for any question. So uh, I hope you guys have got a lot of good painting done. Um, so next up, we've got 19 Mark F91. But hey guys, rules qu query question here. Grimas attached to an enemy shaman's warband. The shaman cannot cast channel fury due to not having enough might. The shaman decides to cast normal fury on one will instead. Later on in the game, the shaman manages to get uh, get out of distance of Grima. Can the shaman now cast channel fury with another available will? Uh, I don't know if recasting an exhaustion spell is allowed. Thanks. Happy strategy. Yeah, belt. it would. It would. It, 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 normally recasting an exhaustion spell. You, there'd be no point to it because it's 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 already there because your your will is there, mm -hmm. but um, yeah, there'd be that that would be a situation where you could do it. Obviously, you'd only be able to use one dice and just sort of hope. Uh, and of course, I suppose that the the exhaustion spell that you had cast would still be there, wouldn't it? If uh, so, it would be yes. no risk. You kind of risk losing your might, but yeah, you're gonna yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. you, and you're one dicing you're one dicing your channel version. But I, I think it's unless it specifically says in the rules that you can't cast a spell that you've already got, but I don't think it does anyway, I think it's, uh, that would that'd be yeah, a good situation for it. Yeah, um, I'm, I'm, I'm going with that. <laughs> <laughs> Next up we've got Duncan MCs, but hi guys, thanks for answering my question last week. In the loop now and all that? Yes you are. What does being in the loop mean? It means if you asked a question this week, you have to ask a question next week and then you're trapped for the rest of time. That's right. <laughs> well done. And a quick note before, oh sorry, a quick note before this week's question, I am one such Bleep, who has taken uh, taken on the electric wires at Tough Mudder, got zapped in the head and momentarily blacked out. <laughs> <laughs> Tough Mudder is like a, an adventure race, and there is there's lots of cool obstacles. Jane's done it. A lot of my um, fitness community do it. Um, but there is one obstacle which, if I did it, I wouldn't I wouldn't do, which is mm -hmm. you run through a bunch of um, like dangling slightly electrified wires oh, and that sounds like a great time and you get like stung and stuff but some mm -hmm. people have got hit on the temple and things and get no blacked idea. out which yeah. is not good um, he's put uh, it stung a little and left, left a nice red mark but it wasn't so bad can highly recommend doing Tough Mudder yeah me too uh, he's put anyway I recently have a fair bit of spare time and having just bought the kingdoms of men fantastic I'm mm. sorting out my Rohan army list oh, the, joining the legions of Rohan they come so high in the meta now there used to be no Rohan players and no all and then just every, every other person you meet this is why I like you David Alexander because you say things that make me feel good about life <laughs> um, he's put if the points limit is high enough, is a spellcaster, for example, Gandalf the Grey, as I own the model of him, a necessity, or is it worth bulking up the army with banners, war horns, and plenty of warriors? Love the channel, keep up the good work. No war horns, because you've got Erkenbrand, hopefully. Mm -hmm. um, in terms of bulking out with banners, I'd recommend a banner. I have done a thousand points, and when I did a thousand points, I took Gandalf the White. I think if you know how to use a wizard, it can change your game and can yeah. win you games. But I think with my playstyle, I would have preferred another hero and another warband. Yeah, I mean, they, they, they are very expensive and you're going to be a small army anyway, so it kind of depends on what you've got yeah. and what the scenarios are in the thing you're fighting, playing against, because uh, yeah. sometimes if you're playing against something where it's just... If, if, you're playing, if you see the scenarios and think, oh, people will probably be taking big heroes to that or there might be a lot of ring race, then having mm -hmm. a wizard can, can kind of help stop the hero from, from killing you, but um, blasting people around. But um, it's fun to use. Yeah. It's fun to use a wizard, and uh, they, they can they can massively change the game. And it, of course, it, there are a lot of points, easy. and they can do nothing as well. Uh. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah I, 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 enjoy, I enjoyed using Gan after White, but I, di I did come away afterwards thinking I would probably. Oops. I'll answer to you, brother. Uh, I would probably I would probably have preferred uh, another hero and some more troops. So thanks for that question. Next up, we've got Stephen Quo. He again was at the league final and uh, going to watch the Hobbit with him this week. So hi, gents. Congrats on Jamie on the new gaff. Uh, look forward to letting Boromir do his training pre Harrod <laughs> Harrod wipeout. <laughs> oh, he's what's this? He's he's obviously practicing play against me in the in the local Hobbit campaign. All right. Uh, which is that map up on the board over there? Can you uh, see yes. it? Yes. Uh... Very cool. Um, he's put. Jimbo, I think you'll find you attacked me. That's that's not true. I moved not far away from you preemptively, and then you came into the desert, so you attacked me. And he's put, um, and just so that you know, you have no militia days. You can only place militia tiles on your own. Yeah, I'm not. Uh, I'm, I'm busy on campaign night, so uh, so yeah, I'm just contributing. <laughs> he's put. 
Uh, anyway, here's my question. With all these Smaugwort rumours, what do you think the new profile will be, bearing in mind how good the standard dragons are already? Mm -hmm. And following on from that, will Smaug be an auto win in a straight up fight of equal points values? It's difficult to know. It's, it's fun to sort of guess at, isn't it? Because um, he has to be powerful enough that he could wipe out towns and all of Erebor but weak enough that Bard could kill him with one shot. Uh, <laughs> but <laughs> well, it's, it, maybe the rules will tie in with the new uh, Bard mm -hmm. with Ballista. Yes, that's true. Uh, I mean, again, I don't know what happens in the film in terms of... Because um, I don't think... In, and in the books, he doesn't... There's no Ballista and things. It's nope. just... Um, so in the books, it's just... It might be a bit of a red herring. It might be kind of you know, leading up to, oh, you'll, you'll, you'll have the Ballista, but then you know, maybe it won't work and you'll have to... Or miss. Yeah, you know, have, to, have to do it himself or something. I think he'll uh, do it himself. But, you know, because he, he, he has to be one of these interesting... The, 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 the best super big monsters that they've made, uh, would, in the early games, they just made them things being lots of points and all the stats very high, and they're kind of unkillable, but they're lots of points. And then more recently, they've come up with more monsters that are lots of points, can do lots of killing, but have interesting weaknesses, like the Mummock that stomps over all your own troops, or mm -hmm. uh, uh, Gulivar that loses uh, yeah, attacks with wounds and stuff. Mm. So, so you, you'd probably have... I'd like to hope that you'd have lots of crazy things, probably breathing fire somewhere. Yeah, be able to fly, breathe fire, tough. I, I think mm -hmm. he'll be uh, like the normal dragon. But he has but to have all, a weakness. Have all, most of the upgrades have mm -hmm. a couple of other things. I mean, something I was theorizing, he might have some, he might have some like ridiculously strange thing, like he'll have, he'll be like really fighty and really high fighty and high attacks, but like one wound, but like really high defense or some some crazy thing because. Because uh, that would be that would that would be kind of a like you know like ring race and the same ring race and the fell beast, you can kind of kill it in one shot, but you probably won't. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see, and we shall know in, a, week, in a week's time. Yeah. So uh, so look forward to discussing that and watching the Plantier show as they discuss that. So next up, we've got Harry HD Miniatures from Australia. He's put congrats. I guess you're at 51 now. What an achievement! I think I've actually watched over 40 of them. <laughs> Brilliant. You need to watch the rest. Uh, he's put, my question this week is, how much of your armies are still unpainted? Mine's around 75% unpainted. And what is your prediction for the hobby after the release of the last movie? Do you think it will die off or continue in a few years' time? Cheers, and in Theoden voice, for Failingus! <laughs> Harry. Uh, first part, unpainted armies. Uh, blah, 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 blah. I've got... I reckon I'm probably at about... Uh, yeah, probably about seventy. No, maybe sixty percent, sixty seventy percent unpainted. Probably most. Yeah, I mean, I've kind of got basically my high elf army twice because I repainted it and just bought all the models again, and then just lots and lots of bits and pieces. I've got about a full Harad army, old Harad army before any of the the new, the new sort of metals and stuff came yeah. out. Uh, yeah, so thinking about actually, I'm probably at seventy percent unpainted. And and. <laughs> Loads, loads of just rawhead bits and pieces when I was trying to get into uh, War of the Ring and there's yeah so a lot of a lot of other other things from other games that are just lying around and I've got like kind of cupboards that just you open them up and just sprues fall on you and <laughs> <laughs> I think I think I think most people are in that situation where you've got like sort of seventy eighty even ninety percent of things that are unpainted I mean, I think my mission next year when everybody else is going to be enjoying the tournaments is that um, I'm actually going to not just try and finish my backlog but I want to go over the painting of mm -hmm. my Rohan yeah. because I, it's the army I use the most, the army I enjoyed most and I want it to look the best. So, And in terms of what do we think will happen with the hobby, um, I think that you know, I, I think that the hobby, Hobbit, will stay on sale for a long time because they, it might as well because they've got fine cast and yeah. those moulds will, you know, they don't have to make loads. I'm not sure when the licence runs out, it's, uh, it's, it's not it's like a couple of years after. Loads of people have loads of people have banned it. Like some people said, two thousand fifteen. Other people two thousand seventeen. People said two thousand sixteen. Two thousand. I don't think anybody knows. Mm. So, um, well, some people will know, but you you know what I mean. I guess the thing is with all these channels and all our selling out their tournaments and buying lots of stuff. The hope is that we could we could make them re renew their license maybe once and get mm. a couple of extra more years than they were planning, but. And that's down to you guys mm -hmm. to support your hobby. Hobby. So you know, if you're not sure about any new releases, buy them anyway. <laughs> buy them anyway. Um, Even after the workshop stopped doing it, the the rule set will still exist. The rule set will still exist, and the community that has been built will still exist. So that's that's the good thing. That's the good thing. Um, next up, we've got Lixation. He's put, hi guys, just wondering if you would ever consider doing a Harad versus Gondor for battle companies. Additionally, when using Betrayer as part of a Haradrim army, is a normal ring ray from Felbeast adequate, or is it expected to make a conversion? Thanks. 
No, no, I yeah, think it, it varies. Good. I mean, a lot of people prefer the aesthetic of just the the prefer the look of the the unnamed sort of ring wraiths. Mm-hmm. I'm I'm kind of similar as well. I mean, I took uh, a night of Umbar to uh, Sterling. I kind of didn't want to. I wanted to originally take something like a sh- uh, a Shadow Lord or an Undying, or even or preferably just a Witch King, but. Uh, but the Night of Umber was the only one I had on foot, um, and so I just had the generic, yeah. generic ring wraith. Um, I mean, I might have even had the the generic ring wraith on foot, foot, but I think if you're doing that, you 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 need, again similar. You need to make it absolutely clear to your opponent yes. which one's which, uh, and it helps if you're only taking one to say it's him, um, or you know even yeah. the, you can, can give them a slightly different taint to the color of their clothing and stuff. And you, yeah, you could do that. You could change your paint scheme. It's just got to be clear to your opponent. The difficulty comes if when you've got multiple. But mm-hmm. as long as you can make it clear to your opponent, that's the, that's the most important thing. And I've seen that before. I've seen people use normal ring wraiths on fell beasts, and it is you know the betrayer is the knight of Umbar. Um, you know, to save people from making that conversion. Uh, although I have seen some very cool conversions as well. So next up, we've got uh, the Seracio. He's put, hi guys. Uh, I recently got back into the hobby thanks to you. Mm. That, yeah. That's great news. That's what we like to hear. Uh, he's put and bought myself the new Hobbit rule book. Good man. Now there are lots of profiles in there that I can't find the points cost of. The, oh, but I can't find the points cost cost of the old Lord of the Rings figures. Where can I find them? Find them? Thanks. This is a nice, simple question. Mm-hmm. It's in the five source books. There, decreasingly. Uh, Disappearing. I think there's, is it, which buy one? them now. Uh, yes, buy. If there's there, there's five of them. There's uh, Moria and Agmar that has all the goblins and uh, uh, Agmar stuff. There's Mordor, which is just Mordor, and Fallen Realms, which is all your Isengard, Harad, uh, Easterlings, and then there's two for good Kingdoms of Men, and which are just Men, Rohan, Gondor, Free Peoples, which is everything else, Elves, Dwarves, Fellowship, yeah, Wanderers in the Wild, random bits and pieces, all that kind yeah. of stuff. So you need to get hold of them, and you need to get hold of them quick before they sell out. And there's a lot of local hobby shops might have spare copies of things lying around. That's true, yeah, because a lot of people have been sort of coming across, you know, putting on the Facebook mm-hmm. group. I've just found a hobby shop; it's got three copies of the Free People. I mean, I, I would mm-hmm. buy them. <laughs> and of course, the Desolation of Smoke book, which is yes, yeah. which everybody has to buy now. To support yeah. your hobby hobby. Uh, next up, we've got Faith in Heresies. Put right first comment from me. So here goes. Well, now that he's asked a question, what does he have to do? Has to ask another one. Next. Fantastic. Um, he's put, what would you recommend for a 500 point army of Moria Goblins? Is the Cave Troll worth it? And who should I use as my heroes? Thanks and well done on a great channel. Um, Moria Goblin, I would say you want you Black Shields, mm-hmm. you want um, some form of cheap spear support. If you can get Marauders in there, they're good. Maybe a Bat Swarm, um, that could be quite handy. Yeah, the thing with it's quite an adaptable army because you can either have masses and masses of numbers or you can have. Enough numbers to equal the numbers of someone else, and then a lot of toys. Yeah. Like the you know um, cave trolls, they're they're more worth it now with the brutal power attacks, but the defense six makes them very very vulnerable to other heroes. Defense six fight six means mm. that there's a lot of heroes with oven blades that will just beat them and and win them on fives. Chop them up. And, uh, <laughs> So yeah, maybe maybe not, but it should be good fun. Mm-hmm. You could probably do better with two marauders. And, uh, okay, what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to pause this and I'm going to have to make this phone call. <laughs> oh dear, I'm in trouble. Okay, so let's get this up and we'll have to go through this quick, 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 quick. Okay, so next up, oh, we've only got two more questions. That's, oh, that's all right then. That's good news, okay. that's good news. Okay, hi guys, I listen to you. This is Sean Shaw. 100. He's put, hi guys, I listen to you as I paint, so I actually listen to more than 29% of your videos. Brilliant stuff. Yeah. But my question is this week, I played Dwarves and my regular opponents played Rohan. This tends to involve me being hopelessly outmaneuvered, picked off at range, before the surviving lot of Dwarves are ridden into the ground. How do you recommend countering this? Cheers and keep up the good work. Um, I would say mm-hmm. lots of defence 7. Makes it very tough. Tough for their shooting because 6s and 4s to shoot you then, isn't it? 6s uh, by 4s to shoot you then. I would say... Do not make the mistake of trying to chase after them. Try and use the terrain and be mindful of what the objectives are rather than the, the cavalry themselves. So, are you playing high ground? Mm. Well, just focus on the objective. Are you playing whole ground? Focus on the objective and stay together. Yeah, get to the middle and then try and. Yeah. Um, you know, are you playing domination? That's going to be tougher for you. Um, focus on three objectives. <laughs> you know. Um, Two of them at least, and then you know try and get one towards I mean, the end. Dwarves can bring shooting, and their shooting would, if if they had enough of it, would be more worrying to a to a, a Rohan player than than the Rohan shooting would be because because mm-hmm. uh, it's because it's higher strength and yeah, um, but, but yeah, 
But then again, a, a, a dwarf bow is yeah. Don't don't just play shorter range. Yeah, don't just play pitch battle fights. Just no, because um, it favours certain armies. Like uh, if you play, if you play a multiple multitude of different scenarios, um, yeah, it can help. You can work, work through the scenarios and focus on on those, and that would be a good way of battle because they're there for, they're there for a reason. Um, and finally, finally. So we will have to rush off. Yeah, yeah. It's, but it's Dave Egan. Can't think of a question this week, so I'll just say congratulations on Speak Friend and Question 50 Lads. Well, thank you very much, thank you. Dave Egan. <laughs> and uh, thank you very much, Dave Alexander, not just for yeah. helping me out with this, but also for helping me out on Friday. Uh, we've set up the gaming hall and for attending what was hopefully an amazing league for Lali. Yeah, it was great. Um, so I'm about to go and incur the wrath of Jane, and deservedly so, I did say I was only popping out for 20 minutes. And <laughs> <laughs> so what are we on now? Is it? Uh, just over an hour. Yeah. So guys, um, as always, make sure that you comment, like, share and subscribe, that you follow us on Facebook and on Twitter, and you like our page. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Support your Hobbit, Hobbit Hobby and happy strategy battle game. Woo! <laughs> <laughs>